All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what we're going to go through here, and of course you're following along on page um, nine in your unit booklet, we're going to go through types of chemical reactions. Okay? All right. Now, you have some blank slides, and, and the idea, of course, is for you to fill in information as this information is presented to you on screen, but I also want you to hear what I have to say as we're going through these, uh, as we're going through this information. So there are, in general, five types of chemical reactions that we've identified. Okay? Yes? Page, page nine. Nine. Now, on this, the spacing looks a little bit different because this laptop computer that I'm using presents widescreen 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And when I originally printed this, it's a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So the spacing is a little bit different, but the content is the same. Okay? So as we go through these, what I want you to realize is that um, there are five types. The first one we call synthesis. It's also known as combination. Okay? So write this in. Now, I, I want you to realize synthesis reactions are very important for the process that we call life, okay? It's one of the main jobs of your cells to actually take simple molecules and link them together to make much more complex molecules, okay? For example, your hair, your muscle structures, these are proteins for the most part. And proteins are composed of smaller subunit molecules we call amino acids. And so one of the main jobs of your cells is to link up amino acids together, if not thousands, perhaps tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of amino acids to what is called synthesized proteins. And this is one of the processes that your cells employ to make, well, you. All right? Inherently what this is, is you're taking simpler substances and you're chemically bonding them together to make them more complex. A good metaphor would be like what my eight-year-old daughter loves to do. She loves Legos. She loves them. Yes, when they step, when we step on them, they hurt tremendously. And so it's one of the constant battles in my home to try to get Legos to be up and off the floor, not only so we don't step on them and hurt our feet, but also we have a 16-month-old that's running around and putting everything in his mouth, and we keep telling our 8-year-old and our 5-year-old, if you don't put your Legos away, Casey, who's the 16-month-old little boy, he's going to pick them up, put them in his mouth, choke, and, and die, which we don't want to happen, right? So they're, they're pretty good about cleaning up their Legos. Nonetheless, you got to realize, when you put Legos together, you've got simple pieces, and you combine them and make more complex structures. Right? Yes. So this is a good metaphor in your mind to understand what a synthesis or a combination reaction is. Okay? The next type of reaction is referred to as decomposition. Right? My daughter already knows what she's going to get for me for Christmas. I'm getting her a big, another big Lego set. Last year, last year she got uh, the Hogwarts castle. I mean, she's seven years old at the time now. She's eight. She sat for like six consecutive hours and put. 1,500 individual Lego pieces together and made the whole big Harry Potter Hogwarts Classer thing, Hogwarts Castle thing. It's awesome. It's on a display shelf now. And she synthesized this more complex Hogwarts Castle out of 1,500 smaller pieces, right? Now, if I were to take that Hogwarts Castle or if her 16-month-old 
younger brother were to get a hold of that Hogwarts castle, right? He'd bust it all apart. My eight-year-old would probably freak out. I would probably too, because I know how much work she put in to put that together, okay? But as Caroline was composing it or synthesizing it to make it, to build it up and make it, Casey would destroy it or decompose it. So what I want you to realize in a synthesis and a combination reaction, as opposed to a decomposition reaction, these are opposites of one another, okay? So you might write down in your notes that synthesis and, and decomposition are opposites of one another. I think of synthesis as manufacture or buildup of more complex structures. Decomposition is when you take complex structures and they lose their composition, they lose their complex nature. They become more simple as a result of decomposition. You've heard of decomposition in terms of what happens to the body of organisms after they, after they die, right? The process of life, ladies and gentlemen, is a constant battle against the forces of entropy. And entropy is the whole process that naturally occurs when we've got organized systems that tend to descend into chaos or disorder, right? Entropy is that process. When an organism is no longer living, it's not getting any new energy, and so it doesn't have any energy to fight the process of decomposition. It loses its composure as it decomposes. Do you understand the word? You should, okay? The next type of reaction that we're going to identify here is called combustion. You've all heard of combustion. It's a fancy word for burning. If you see flame or if you see spark, these are signs of a chemical reaction, yes? So any time there's flame, It's burning, more specifically called combustion, okay? The next type of reaction we're gonna list here is called single replacement. And the fifth and final type of reaction is double replacement. Okay, so make sure that we have all these five types of reactions written down as they need to be. Make a note for yourself, perhaps, that combustion is really, as you might think of it, as just burning. Okay? So what we're going to do is look at these sort of letter combinations. And these identify overall patterns as you go from reactants on this first side of the arrow and then what the arrow points to is what we end with. These are products. This first one, the A with the plus in the middle and the B afterward, what that's implying is that A and B are separate alone by themselves. Okay? And after the arrow here, Notice there's no plus in between the A and the B. The A is right next to the B. What it implies is that the A is now chemically combined or bonded, as we could say, with the B. The A is bonded to the B. Here for number two, we have A and B together to start as reactant, and then what's produced are now A and B separated from one another. To me, number one is going from a simple situation to a more complex situation. Number two is going from a complex separated into more simple materials. This third one, notice how we have some reactant A combining with two is oxygen and producing this material we call carbon dioxide and this material which we call water. 
Well, the A is generally going to be some type of fuel with carbon and hydrogen. We call it a hydrocarbon. And the reason I, I don't want to list anything in particular here, this is sort of a generic symbol. This A is a generic symbol for some type of fuel is because our type of things that could be burning can vary. But almost always in, a, in this type of reaction, oxygen is the other reactant. And almost always what is produced, if we have complete combustion, carbon dioxide and water. Okay? This, what I have here, is one solo element. And then here I have a compound. And if you notice, this single A replaces this B. So we start with A by itself and B and C chemically together, bonded together. But then as we finish, now I have A bonded to C and B is by itself. It's almost like A kicks B out of place. All right? It's much as if I had Kyle dancing with Christina. OK? And we can do this. It's much as if we had Kyle dancing with Christina, and Louie comes over and says, Kyle, go away. And now Louie starts dancing with Christina. And Kyle's there all by himself, all sad and lonely. <laughs> right? So in a way, we've had one replacement, right? Louie replaces Kyle in that scenario I just delineated. Here in the, in the diagram, A is replacing B. OK? Now this, this, this scenario, this fifth scenario, let's, let's change this up again. Let's say um, A and B represent Kyle and Christina, and C and D represent, I don't know, Austin and Danielle. And they're dancing together. But then all of a sudden, Kyle and Austin decide, oh, let's switch places. So then we'd have Kyle dancing with Danielle and Austin dancing with Christina. And so what that really is is there's two replacements going on. Austin replaces Kyle, and Kyle replaces Austin. They replace one another. Now, we'll talk about this later on in context of real reactions, or rather you will. Um, but if you didn't already figure it out, this first one is a combination or synthesis reaction. The second one would be a decomposition reaction. The third one, combustion. And these words are abbreviated, of course. The fourth one would be a single replacement reaction. And the fifth one would be a double replacement reaction. So you should be writing those in. And on the third slide on page 9, you should be writing in what those various general pattern formats are in, a, in as much as it relates to the five types of reactions. Okay? Now, you will do some figuring out of how real reactions are involved, in, um, identified in terms of these five types. Another good thing to do, ladies and gentlemen, would be to write a one-sentence summary that describes everything that I've just been talking about for the past 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes here. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick one-sentence summary that describes these five types of reactions. Okay? So the first one, what was the first one called? <coughs> Synthesis, also known as combination. To me, a good summary would be to say that a synthesis reaction is where two, or in some cases more, very simple reactants come together or bind, bond together to make a more complex product. So it would be valuable, it would be valuable for you to write down these words. A decomposition reaction, in contrast, would be where you have a complex reactant that breaks down to make two or more simpler products. The combustion reaction 
is where one reactant, usually a hydrocarbon fuel. Now, what elements do you think hydrocarbons have in them? What elements? Okay. Hydrogen. Carbon and hydrogen. Okay. So things like gasoline, natural gas, diesel fuel, coal, wax. These are hydrocarbon fuels. And you all know, if you ever burn a candle, if you have a candle burning, and you cover it, and you prevent new air from getting to the flame, the flame goes out, right? So when we say a flame needs air, really what we're saying is to complete this reaction, the fuel reactant needs the oxygen to chemically combine with to end up making our carbon dioxide and water. It's pretty much a universal pattern for a combustion reaction. A single replacement reaction is one where one element and one compound react to make that different element and a different compound. I, lo I cheated here a little bit. I wrote a second sentence. In this single replacement reaction description, one element gets kicked out by another from, and then in a double replacement reaction, you've got two compounds that react and recombine to make two new and different compounds. 